are not the only guardian to stand watch over Middle-earth. It really feels like a reunion. I mean, everybody that was in The Lord of the Rings that we needed for The Hobbit returned. Welcome to Rivendell. It's been great to be back here. Great to meet up with lots of people that were all working on Lord of the Rings. Ah, oh, the ring. Elrond is one of the three elven rings. That's the very bright. <laughs> <laughs> This could be you. It's going to be so grim. Oh, look at that. Hello. We have a Hello. I'm serious, you have not aged a single day. I think I look younger, actually. You do, yeah, actually. I think so, too. You're yeah. not the only guardian to stand watch over the middle earth. I, I remember it now, yeah. but Ooh. later on. Ooh. I didn't have a script until I got here. But that's part of the nature of working with Pete anyway. New lines here. So I kind of knew that that's what would be the situation. Well, if you have another meeting, I'll try to go. <laughs> no, this, no, the meeting we had this morning. This is, just learnt those lines. This is the result of the Quick, meeting. Quick, let's film it now. <laughs> These runes were written on a midsummer's eve by the light of a crescent moon nearly 200 years ago. I remember that, that uh, day's filming, particularly as, as I was with Hugo Weaving, one of the most congenial members of the original cast, and, and, and to meet up again with him was lovely. Ooh, yes. And we always laughed together, <laughs> Hugo and I. I was kind of in awe of him uh, initially, and, but he's an incredibly fun person to be with just on a day-to-day -day basis. Our background is, is very similar, working in the classical theatre. These runes were written on a midsummer's eve. Suddenly we have a, <laughs> a prominence in the film industry which amuses us. <laughs> because I think we both basically think that where we belong is with our feet firmly planted on a stage somewhere. I mean, it's always interesting so, when Ian and I are off set doing all the <laughs> characters. <laughs> I don't know that I can explain it. It was very bizarre. So all the scale doubles, large and small, were required for a wide shot, which meant that none of the actors in the scene were actually there. So it was kind of a slightly weird sitting in a couple of chairs, reading this radio play while watching these smaller and larger people acting it out. We still have time. For what? Well, to um, find this entrance, we'll have to be standing in exactly the right spot of exactly uh, the right time. We're alert to the ridiculousness of it all. What do you mean? You're not the only guardian to stand watch over Middle Earth. But I think can behave when necessary. Well, I mean, Peter, if you've, um, we got rid of this. <laughs> Red will come down the stairs and... Uh do a wonderful bit of Elvish breathing mm. for us, mm. and you'll just go fly and... I was completely thrilled to be asked uh, to come back on the film um, for any part. He had played a very beautiful elf in Lord of the Rings, so beautiful that he, he'd drawn attention away from more important characters on the screen. My lady! And got his nickname, an acronym from Frodo is Great, F-I-G. Who is that? Referring to Brett, Figwit and Peter asked him back, and he very gamely came along with a name now, Lindia, and a line or two. My Lord Elrond, the dwarves, they've gone. Resetting? Do you like it? I'm going back to my unit now. It's very easy over here. Keep going, all right. It's like you're always sort of, in a way, the elves are always prepared to welcome Gandalf, and that's no big deal, but when he brings these little bastards in, it's, it's like the trouble. Mithrandir. Lindia. Working with Ian McCallum was a total career highlight. I was sort of nervous and, you know, intimidated. He's incredible to watch on screen and then to get to watch him up close. Where is he? He's a very good actor. I mean, I can handle one sentence quite well, like, Got it. Got that one down, right? But 
this one about the dwarves using all the wine up. I mean, it, would, it, would have been it was a complete mind flip. Oh. The creative team decided over lunch that they wanted him to do an Elvish scene that afternoon. Brett, you've got some Elvish. He says, you're joking. I said, no, and it's three lines, and it's going to be shot in one shot, so we can't cut in and out of it. And he went a bit pale. We're going to shoot straight up, first up. First up, one take, get it perfect, no pressure. Ah, <laughs> oh, so stressful. Yeah, because being on set is a very stressful atmosphere, even when you're speaking English. Now, if you can start your, your line, Brett, before you even appear... <laughs> Fran and Philippa write the lines in English. Then those lines are sent to David Salo. The, the Elvish specialist, and then he translates the English into Elvish, and then Rasheen then shows me the words. And then I can't say them. And so I was walking around the set trying to remember this nonsense. It always sounds good on the rehearsal, never when the camera rolls. <laughs> First rule of filmmaking. And action. Tainan, Baranabed, Athar Glein, Nevwi Penny, Mirvo. Mananin Gaz. Okay, here's our take. Print it, one try. Nevwi Penny. Something. Nevwi Penny, Mirovor. Sorry, Mananin Gaz. He and Hugo had a fantastic rapport as well, and so they kind of helped them helped each other through a particular level of panic that I don't think <laughs> I don't think everybody thrives on. Mananinges, Namani Dartathar. Manar Uno. And I just, just got it right. Barely. There you go. Let's, let's, let's give Brett a shot of scotch. <laughs> Do it perfectly again to the camera now. What did you say? Tiny. But I'm not bad at that. Glain. Nevi Penny, Mirvor. We're getting rid of that. Mananin, something or other. You forget it already. You see it slipping away. <laughs> slipping away. Oh, you don't want to get So we're shooting in Rivendell, and this is the courtyard, the arrival of the company. Arriving in Rivendell was pretty difficult because we had all our bags and sacks. We had the full kit. Most of us could barely stand up. It's pretty tough. You can see them suffering in between each take. I don't know. Ah, here we go again. Ah, yes, the dwarves. They travel light. Yeah, I think there was a bit of a communication problem there with the packs because I don't know where they said, look, let's see how much these guys can carry. But when it was put on me, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe Jed's weight. I just don't feel like I've got enough stuff. Can you give me some more stuff? I mean, there was nearly 50 kgs worth of weight that was put on us. See, that's more like it. I've got my toilet in there, my tent, matches, a bit of food, some tin fruit. I've actually been hiding over there, so I delayed putting this on as long as possible. <laughs> Where's Ori? Ori? Yeah, Ori. Stay, stay there, I'll just oh, go on my soapbox. Thanks, Peter. So, hey guys, what we're going to do, we're just going to do a, um, a, like three shots in one. We're, going to get, we're just going to get the bit at the beginning where Ian walks through the gate and then Ian will retire because the real shot's going to be Paul leading you guys. And charge. Oh, oh, and circle. The dwarves will be sometimes our real actors, but of course they were far too big for horses. We're also going to be using our scale doubles, who will bravely stand their ground as horses thunder towards them. We hope. We'll have to see. And we'll find out in a couple of hours how brave they really are.
scales are, are vitally important. And uh, and yeah, I mean, you build up a relationship with, with your scale because I mean, he's watching you in the screens all the time. You're doing your stuff, and he's in costume and wearing a face mask, wearing a mask that is a mold of your own face, with similar facial hair, coloring, everything, but with a stern look. So he's walking around with this kind of look at him, this evil look the entire time. And then you go, all right, Robin goes. Hey, how's it going? What? Yeah. And this kind of voice comes out, you know, and you kind of go, shit, this is weird. I wish you'd take off his mask right now. <laughs> so it's quite, it's quite disconcerting. It's quite weird to have them walking around. I mean, it's uncanny how close some of them look, some of them more than others. And horse charge, horse charge! around very good it was a really great way of seeing just the whole process of being a scale double come down to a nice complete scene Narthoinoer tolsoi viru oyanam van anethailvin what is he saying does he offer us insult no, Master Klein, he's often a spook. Like, I'll just... Yeah, 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 okay. And I think I would need a napkin. Is this the napkin? Yes, yeah. it is the napkin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's an epic. <laughs> <laughs> this is... going to have the proper size. <laughs> 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 well, this is clearly the small <laughs> scale. I'll do a terrible job. What did I tell you about the large napkin? <laughs> Right, rolling resets this time, guys. The way that we try and get through this as quickly as possible is to keep the cameras rolling and just do take after take after take. There's only one thing for it. And reset. Resetting. And as soon as we were done with a take, I'd say, OK, reset, let's go again. We call them rolling resets. <laughs> because as soon as I said cut, You'd literally have 30, 40 people swooping in around the dwarves. There's someone to look after their hair, their makeup, their costumes. Every time you say cut, it's like 20 minutes gone. Every time. They run in, something falls off, sweating, cooling them down, 20 minutes gone. I mean, it was that sort of thing. <laughs> you need the kind of the patience of an ox. Should we shoot? Clear everybody off the step. Are you just going to keep that OK, let's do some rolling yeah, resets. Fine, yeah. We're able to do that because we're not shooting film. When uh, we're shooting film, obviously, it's very expensive. Digital cameras, you put a little card in, you can shoot for, like, 15 minutes, and then you can just download that footage, and then you can reuse the card. So the whole thing's a bit cheaper. So I kind of realised that the best thing I could do to speed along the day was not to yell, cut. And <laughs> That's the way I love working, and I think a lot of actors love working like that, because it's, you stay in the moment and there's an energy and you build on the energy, one take builds on the next, builds on the next. But it was also a great way to kind of keep the dwarf contingent at bay so I could get through four or five takes in reasonably quick time. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, Adam. You're all done. Uh, it's good. Peter, we'll just leave you, leave you in there for a while. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're, you're done too. <laughs> I just wanted to get that look in your eyes. <laughs> Naughty dwarves, badly behaved, much a little bit. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. For that very long day, we needed to get Martin away from our fair shores. Yep, that was fantastic. Thanks, everybody. We lose Martin today, so we will have finished the first six weeks of shooting with Martin, and he's got to go back to the UK to do another season of Sherlock. Go. The game is a foot, Watson. Yeah, only take it out for six hours. Don't, don't want to see yeah. any of this okay. Sherlock. I mean, you don't remember. <laughs> or any of this. Okay. Well, you, you can yeah, you yeah. Take, take. remind you. The game is a foot. And while he's away, we're going to be shooting um, more Elvish stuff with Elrond, Gandalf, and Galadriel. Oh, it's all coming back it's to coming me. Back to <laughs> it's an amazing thing to be able to return to something that was begun 12 years ago. Oh, here she is. Here she is. I will never exist again. Welcome. Little elf kiss. Yeah. Welcome. Aww. It was a little bit like returning to summer camp. See you on very well. Good, good, good. good. Very nice good. to see you. And action. 
Lady Galadriel. Show me. I suppose this is the thing about whether it raises the stakes for this thing to suddenly be produced in, in terms of the outward yeah. meeting. Kate Blanchett has played some of the great classic roles in theatre, and you, you can't do that unless you're alert to all the possibilities for your character and discuss them openly with, with, with your colleagues, and that's how we go about preparing. Maybe it's what stops me is the psychic speech of yes. you've, you're carrying something. Yes. Like, I mean, that's what I'm trying... I'm, there's something going on with them and I'm trying yes. to work out what it is. And that sort of preparation is not usual in films. In films, the actors are cast because of their known qualities and they turn up on set and they're expected to deliver on the first day of shooting. Really? With, with very little preparation. But in, in this case, we, we did all sit round. You know, I, I'm perfectly fine to actually just sit down with the cast and, 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 and send everyone away for a cup of tea for half an hour, give us the set quietly to ourselves and just work the scene up and change it. And we either have, you know, Philippa or, or, or Fran there. Hello, darling. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello, I'm just here with Kate and Ian. Yep. And quite a few other people, but never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about this, this scene. To be on a set with one of the greatest living actors, Sir Ian McKellen, and one of the greatest living directors, that's a gift anyway. But then to have such a um, key scene in a way that it sets up Mithrandir, the journey that Gandalf is going on. Why the halfling? It's a very, very beautiful speech. I do not know. In Ian's hands, there's not a trace of sentiment. There's just a well of feeling. Why the halfling? I do not know, but I'll think about it. Um, I've found it is the small things. Where's he going with this? The everyday deeds of ordinary folk. That can keep darkness at bay. What he's that. coming round to is he, he doesn't know. I, I don't know how to put it in the word, but mm, mm. Bilbo Baggins somehow gives me courage to carry on. Oh, no. that you're trying to understand it yourself inside of it. That, That's right. The, the as you go, not understanding it or knowing it that, that's you, it. That's you it. Say the that's it. That's it. Yeah. And 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 he he makes the great confession, which uh, it needed Galadriel to bring out of him, and 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 thinking about mm -hmm. the, these things to say, I am afraid. That's yes. the wonderful, which wonderful. Has to come at the end. Which is yeah. wonderful. I mean, we've been reading each other's minds in the previous scene. Part of the function of the scene is to say something's troubling you. Mm-hmm. What, trying to draw it out of you, trying to get to this moment, you know, of naming the fact that you're frightened. OK. Well, um, but I'll also tell you what's at the heart of this. What's at the heart of the speech is this ties into the speech in The Minds of Moria in the second film when you say it was the pity of Bilbo that, that stayed his hand. My heart tells me that Gollum has some part to play yet, for good or ill, before this is over. The pity of Bilbo may rule the fate of men. So there's something you at play here that you don't even understand. That's right. And it's something That's to right. do with the essence of a hobbit, that yeah. somehow yeah. you can have armies, you can have might, you can have force, yeah. you can do everything in a sensible kind of rational way, but there's something that you haven't discovered yet, that you haven't been able to rationalise, that's telling you the end of the story has something to do with this little guy and you yourself don't know that but, journey yet. But elves, well, yeah. elves have problems with... What we think of as human emotion, don't mm. they? They don't cry or laugh. No. So do you understand what he's talking about? Well, I think there's something... I, I, in the, I say in the next film, even the smallest small. person can change the course of the future. Mm. I don't know, maybe I've strangely learnt from you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, th I think elves would laugh at a good fart joke, wouldn't, wouldn't they? I mean, everybody <laughs> Yeah, does. but that only happened once every thousand years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah they're dying. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want to sit round with Kate Blanchett and talk about almost anything in the world? The toast. Elfware. The toast city. If Kim Kardashian can bring out some <laughs> platform sneakers, I think Galadriel should have a line, I like the way. You? I like the... Well, yes, I think that's very good. I think the platforms were about... Oh, yeah, they're, really, no, they're about that. Have you got your disco group? Yeah, you've got the disco group. <laughs> you've got them on. <laughs> oh, the ankle breakers. Oh, look, she can move them. Oh, wow. Disco platforms. Because, of course, elves are very tall. I was always relieved when we got to sit down and put the Ugg boots on. But somehow, you couldn't perform Galadriel in Ugg boots. I think I always needed the height. 
Don't stop now. Tell us what the woodsmen say. Christopher Lee was not sitting around the table with the rest of us. His contribution to the scene was filmed in London. I'm sorry, I cannot get up these goddamn steps smoothly. I can't do it, Peter. I'm sorry, because every time I try, I step on the thing. I can't get up these and goddamn steps. And you said sticks. you did it this morning. <laughs> 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 and then you said the great line, this wardrobe is a menace. Yes, you did. <laughs> did I? These clothes are a menace. So for me, that was the signature line of the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> this necromancer. There's nothing more than a mortal man. I couldn't do the trip to New Zealand. I shot those scenes here with ordinary people standing there giving me the lines and the eye line. So you do have to use your imagination quite a bit. You've been busy of late, my friend. The scene had already been shot in New Zealand with the double. And by the magic of film, it all comes together and it looks as if we're in the same place. You've been busy of late, my friend. You can just watch the eyebrows on, on during that. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Ten years. Eyebrow acting. Yeah. I have a habit of doing this, you know. A lot of people do. First you used to say to me, there you go again. All that eyebrow acting. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, well, you know. That's so I was good. always doing that. He's not very yeah, Can I help just you? Just give us a little bit. Just give us a bit of... Just a little of it. Well, don't stop now. Tell us what the woodsmen say. Graham and I went to Pinewood. We weren't filming there, but we went to London. Christopher is such a character. It was such an honour to meet him and... Listen to his stories. The most extraordinary thing that happened to me in the war was uh, there was a time when I was in charge of an Australian squadron. And, you know, they, the Aussies were, in those days, not very easy to control. Well, they're, not, they're still not. We've got a bunch of them on the crew. No, I know. <laughs> Caro Cunningham, our first AD and, and producer, I think, she dreads the moment that Christopher Lee and I get on a set together because it's her job to keep everything moving, to, you know, shoot a shot, sit up, shoot the next one. That's what she's there for to do, and she's very, very good at doing it. And yet Christopher loves telling stories that are of Lord of the Rings length and their epic scope. Yeah. Because from Phuket, we went to Hong Kong, yeah. then to Macau, yeah. then to Bangkok. Boy, that guy's had a life. He's had a life. You go up and you meet a man like that and you have to take the time to realise what's happening. You know that famous shot of the car? Yes, yeah, the corkscrew car. Nobody believed it, you know. No. Nobody no. believed it. I remember Guy Hamilton saying, God, he said, that was absolutely wonderful. Would you do another? <laughs> he said, that, that's the first... Effing time I've done it, <laughs> I'm not ever doing it again. <laughs> it was always a part of spending time with Christopher is are his stories and his ability to recall detail. He spoke like a very, very high squeaky voice. With a very French accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I tend to be happy to sit there with the crew standing around and listen to, to Christopher's stories. It took me about two years yeah. to get that book back to us. I could just see. Carrie looking at her watch in the background, you know, a little concerned about how long it was taking, but we got there in the end. The Australian Aborigine who bought himself a new boomerang and spent the rest of his life trying to get rid of the old one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of my heroes. And yeah, he lived up to it all. Oh, I should press down, of course I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't kneel, please. No, he is, he is, <laughs> sir. I feel like, I feel he's like sir should. Christopher, so you kneeling is appropriate. Thank you. Well, you had to kneel, didn't you? In front, in front of you? No. No, well, I always kneel in front of you. No, well, I wasn't going to bring that up. But... <laughs> <laughs> Not in front of you. That's awesome. 
It was great. He's unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Oh, please. Uh, thank you very much. Photograph. Yes, no, we will do, we will do a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> The return to Bag End, it was actually kind of incredible because the, you know, there were parts of Bag End in London that they'd brought with them. Okay, here we go, here we go, in action. We had he and home in, uh, in the study. We took certain parts of Bag End with us so Ian could be in there. You can't ship this massive set that took up all of V-Stage. And so it had to be very planned as to what was going to be needed. We plotted out the layout of Bag End and then Peter went through and worked out which parts we would need to take with us. So we make it in small enough pieces to fit inside an air freight container and then ship it to London. Put together at the other end. It was like a kit set, Bag End. We also took with us a green screen version because I wanted to use the gobo effects of the window, the window patterns. So we built a set, it's in plywood, but with the windows cut out. So that if I put light through them, I'd still get exactly the same window patterns. I think originally it was just that Peter and Caro were gonna go, but as per normal, more people got added, who conveniently happened to be in the UK at that time. It's cool. It's really cool. To have a chance to return, pop the wig on and the feet on, all those things are part of my DNA in a way. It's so familiar. I love that there's actually leg now. Yeah, no, yeah. it's not, it's, yeah, it's not just Yeah, no, it's feet. much, much better. The advances in Hobbit feet, I think, are gonna make certain Hobbits upset. <laughs> the old Hobbit feet were, you know, molded to our feet, and then we were glued into them, because it took about an hour and a half. Now they're slip-ons. The entire thing is a slip-on. This is great. <laughs> People run in these. Yeah. Why was it so easy before? I don't know. Keep going. Now pull that bit up. <laughs> don't let it go. Don't let it go. Oh my god. Sorry, Elijah. No, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> A sagging foot. I love it. <laughs> 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 It actually felt oddly normal. <laughs> Literally. And in some ways, that felt stranger to me. Like, wow, I, I, it just feels so normal. It doesn't even feel surreal in a way. No, but I mean, yeah. they're like, heavier in the front. Yeah. 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 Two hobbits, one director. <laughs> Very, very cool feeling and wonderful to work with Ian. I mean, I haven't seen Ian in probably eight, nine years. Yeah, action. You seem to think you have tunnels packed with chests of gold. It was one small chest, hardly overflowing. And it still smells of troll. <laughs> great, good. <laughs> Let's just get one more of those. It was great, that's good. Looking around at the landscape, enjoying the sunshine, and this nice big smoke ring now. Lovely, we can cut that. <laughs> Looking good. One, two, three. Here we go. Good. Thank you.